more and more people are waking up to the realization democracy only helps those who are not willing to help themselves. Democracy is an alignment of free riders and their political allies. Democracy does nothing for the person who pays his own way. Indeed, if you want to imagine what a utopia would look like, imagine a group of persons who never took anything without giving back something of equal value, directly or indirectly. It is not difficult to understand why a freeloader would wish contested ideas to be settled by a vote. He is already required to pay his own costs. The natural state of affairs is that each person pays their own way. A vote on the issue will, at the very worst, maintain the status quo. However, if enough free riders exist and enough people can be convinced of the justice of the plight, there is a chance the free riders will get what they want for free, or at a reduced cost. Every election has two possible outcomes. The least likely result is that everything will remain the same. Everyone will pay their own costs and no politically motivated transfers will happen. This means that the winner of the political contest will do nothing. The fact that an election is taking place assumes this outcome will not occur. If a person is looking to free ride, competition arises as parasite compete for the available resources. But if one is giving nothing, any effort will likely give the parasite more than he originally had. This brings us to an interesting realization. Because what might start off as a friendly vote can soon become a hotly contested election. The more free stuff at stake, the more the outcome of an election matters. If one party is promising free everything and the other party wants to reduce the parasitism, then a loss on either side has serious consequences. For free riders, no more free stuff means destitution. Imagine the election being rigged so that one group cannot win, or the two groups are disproportionate in size. The freeloader may not think he is getting enough using the political process, or the taxpayer gets tired of footing the bills. There will be protests and civil disruptions. Democracy is what behaviorists call displacement behavior. Instead of warring against each other, the two groups vote. But then they cannot win by voting people will invariably revert back to fighting. There are a lot of people who think an election will solve their problems. But there are also groups who feel elections and protests have not worked for them and so resort to violence. This is all part of the same system. From voting, to screaming matches, protests and revolutions it is all a continuous flow of competition. The desire for what does not belong to them, divides, stocks fear and causes dissension. Diversity is their strength, when one is a free rider. The more groups, voices and competing factions there are, the weaker any one group is. Yet, for parasitism to exist the host has to be assured that if he complies, the individual loss will be within acceptable bounds, otherwise the taxpayer has nothing to lose. Parasites formulate law to moderate their demands on the system. The victim of democracy becomes an accomplice of his subjugation. To protest against the system requires organization and regulations. The law-abiding citizen requires law to protect his property from the lawless. In the end, the law-abiding taxpayer acknowledges the authority of the state to tax and regulate. Taxpayers may dispute the details, but even the protest acknowledges the authority of the state. But if the taxpaying citizen engages in rebellion against the state, they do this as a competitor. This is why revolutions fail, they substitute one freeloader for another. Unfortunately, we have been educated to think in terms of competition when dealing with opposition. Us and them are both after the same thing so we have to fight over it. Whether we vote or do not vote. Whether we accede to the demands of the state or we engage in armed rebellion, the system wins. There has to be a better way, there is, but it does not involve violence. This is why those who are often the most vocal about the rule of law are often the most violent. One reason criminals love the law 
is that the law holds in check the lawmaker, not the lawbreaker. So, it is in the vested interests of the lawbreaker that the law be respected, at least by others. The law can often be circumvented. The law is far less penetrable by the honest person than the criminal deviant. But the best use of the law is to block those who oppose freeloading. The law makes the cost of rebellion higher than the cost of compliance. This same strategy is used in holdups. It is cheaper to give up one's wallet than to pay the cost of defending one's property. If people balk at the amount of the expropriations, violence can be increased, greater diversity can be promulgated, fear can be ratcheted upwards, then the payment of protection money will once more seem a good idea. It is the fear of violence that permits the levy to be imposed and it is the threat of violence that makes the taxpayer acquiesce to the freeloading. Violence serves a purpose when one is a freeloader.